Hello, what's up you two photographer Ronix Twitter and in this tutorial I want to focus more on the lasso tool when it comes to frequency separation. Most of you tend to do these simple mistakes when it comes to using the lasso tool as a tool to retouch the skin or to even out skin tones in your images when it comes to Photoshop and frequency separation in general. So I'll show you some simple things that may seem obvious, but at the end of this video you're going to be benefiting from it so let me just first of all play my action because i don't want this to be a very long tutorial so i'll simply come to my actions here and i play my 16-bit frequency separation action and by the way this image was taken by nude de luo so i'm just going to simply play my 16-bit frequency separation action so always i've always emphasized this most times when you want to retain skin details or skin textures in your images you always have to be careful with the step when you have to apply the Gaussian blur radius on your images. So this is basically one of the most important steps when it comes to frequency separation. So in this step, we basically look for an area that seems to have more skin details. And we use that area as a reference to blur out or eliminate the textures from the low frequency layer. So when you come to the radius, we drag this up up to a point when we are just starting to lose out on the skin details or skin textures so we have to stop at the point at this point so meaning when it comes to using our lasso tool we are going to be retaining the textures that we lost out on this step so i'm simply going to come and click ok and action is going to create for me all the frequency separation layers right here so basically when you're using the lasso tool we select a given area and we apply Gaussian blur. So let me just delete this briefly. So we select the low frequency layer. So when you're going to use the lasso tool, we apply it when I've selected the low frequency layer. So how to properly use the lasso tool? If at all the lasso tool is showing a plus icon like I have right now, make sure that you have pressed the caps lock key on the keyboard to deactivate the caps lock icon and bring back the lasso tool that it was meant to be. And by the way, this is the lasso tool I'm talking about. So when you're retouching, you always have to make sure you are in new selection mode. So make sure the first box right here is selected right here. And if at all we are editing using frequency separation and we make a selection on the skin, we don't have to go through all the trouble of right clicking and you select and you click on deselect. So what this first option helps us to do is as soon as we are done fine-tuning a given area we either simply have to come and click away from that selection to deselect it or we can simply come so this is we are assuming that this is the previous selection that we have worked on regarding uh frequency separation and we have applied the gaussian blur using the lasso tool so in order to deselect this area you either have to click out from the selection and that is going to deactivate that selection or you can as well come and simply go straight to making a new selection and it's going to automatically start afresh and it's going to automatically deselect so it is more of a shortcut when you click or select this option that says new selection then also when it comes to using the lasso tool as a tool or medium of frequency separation we always have to take into consideration the feathering so the feathering by default is going to be at zero pixels so when you're using a feathering of zero pixels it means when we select so when we select the skin area right here it means that the lower the feathering the sharper the edges of the selection are going to be so if at all i press q on the keyboard you can see how sharp the edges are going to be out of this selection so you have seen some photos whereby the selection or the the edges of the selection are sharp and you can still identify those lines from the selection so it is as a result of using a very low feathering so usually when you're using frequency separation always make sure that your feathering is between about 15 and 25 pixels so for my case i prefer 21 pixels so i just type in that so if at all i am to make a selection on the skin and I press Q again, you can see how smooth the edges are. Then 
The other thing when it comes to using the lasso tool is you always have to avoid from or you keep away from selecting the edges and you always have to keep away from selecting very close to the eyebrows. So when you select close to the edges and you apply the Gaussian blight, it's also going to pick or sample this color and paint it on the skin area. So you have to always keep away from selecting the edges of the subject and you keep away from selecting close to the hair or even the eyebrows to avoid those uneven colors pasted back to this skin or those annoying lines as a result of color multiplication so after ensuring that you always have to make sure to apply the right gush and blur for your image in order to retain skin texture so this is going to be basically how to apply the lasso tool on the image when you're doing frequency separation so for this case i'll simply come and make a selection and usually your selections have to follow the way a given area is shaped so when you select that area and we come to filter we come to blend we come to gush and blur it is going to load or bring back the radius that we had when we have separated the frequencies of this very image so at this point you simply have to click and start dragging it up as you're looking at the image so you left click and start dragging up as you're looking at the image and you stop at that point when you are just starting to get a better skin texture for your image so usually what i would recommend when you're using the lasso tool as a technique the radius that you had for your frequency separation or when you're dividing the frequencies or when you play the frequency separation action just multiply that radius by 3 and type in that value so 7 by 3 is 21 so I'll just type in 21 and you can see how realistic and natural the skin texture has gotten to be in this case so sometimes i wouldn't recommend you to use this lasso tool alone because if at all we apply that and with this select you can see that we have that inconsistencies regarding the skin tones you can see this bumpiness within the skin tones of the model so always make sure you first of all mix these uneven inconsistencies within the skin tone and you blend them using the mr brush tool and you apply the lasso tool as a final touch up to fine tune the areas you may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush tool so the other last thing i would want to share with you is when it comes to using the lasso tool most people often come to the nose area and you select the whole nose and you apply your gush and blur so what this does it not only makes you lose out on the highlight but it also makes the nose look big so always when it comes to these highlights always avoid applying the gush and blur on the brightest areas of your images in order to retain the dimensions or the shape of the given area in the face so if at all you want to apply it on the nose we have to apply it on the darkest area right click and apply it so when you feel like it's too much right click on the selection and simply come to fade gush and blur and you can simply reduce that effect in that given area by turning down the opacity so when it comes to the brightest areas and you want to apply your gush and blur radius you simply have to come make that on only the highlight apply the gush and blur and simply right click on that selection and you can come to fade gush and blur and simply reduce on the effect or the opacity and simply click ok so this is how you can use the lasso tool for your skin retouching but always i recommend that you first of all use the mr brush tool to blend this bumpiness or unevenness within the skin tone transition then you can go ahead and apply your lasso tool so this is it for this video and if at all you have learned a thing or two from these tips i request that you hit the like button on this video because it's going to help you to push and recommend this video to many people out there ronix from Ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating